I gotta say that of all of NASCAR's top teams, the ones who would be thought of as at least playoff contenders or fringe contenders racing every week, Legacy Motor Club has to be the one that we've all noticed the most when it comes to how far they've fallen off from what they did last year. But this is a different team, and a team that's honestly, while new, still very much associated with the history of how it came to be. But that's not going to really help it much when two full-time drivers are in an awful position, and the one part-time owner driver coming in is, well, honestly not much better than he was when he left NASCAR. And to look at the full picture of this, I think we need to go back a little bit to the start of Legacy with Petty. And more in depth with that is Petty Enterprises. From 1954 all the way until 2008, Petty Enterprises was part of NASCAR. You had Lee and Richard really defining a NASCAR champion and winner through about three decades of its existence, maybe four if you want to include before and after, they really started having their biggest success. And it was really the face of NASCAR as a dominant force. But over time, there was a slow fall off with Richard Petty. And through the time from when he retired onwards, it really went like that for the most part in that time. A span of 16 years of mediocrity, of drivers who never lived up to potential, and ultimately a team that continued to fall and fall and fall until 2009, when they became part of Gillette Evernham Motorsports, being part of the big craze at the time of mergers to survive as a team overall, making a four car team with the Evernham Gillette 9 and 19 and the Petty Enterprises 43 and a rebranded 45 to the 44 car. This only lasted for two years, though, before you had Richard Petty Motorsports, as the Gillette Evernham side had failed overall in basically everything it wanted to do and pulled out or was legally made to pull out. So from 2011 to 2022, you had a generally mid-pack team, a team that would sometimes flare up, or they would get lucky with a rain win, or they would have an awesome finish like what happened with Marcus Ambrose in 2012 at Watkins Glen. But the drivers really were ones who either had nowhere to go or were trying to just get another step in the ladder to a bigger team. And with it, it brought the same results, mid-pack driving. So in 2022, you had more Gallagher buying it. And with the advent in the next-gen car, well, you had a team that seemed to have new life. While the 42 car with Ty Dillon wasn't all that good, the 43 car with Eric Jones was one of the fastest week in and week out, even if the results didn't show it. Jones was leading laps, was gaining stage points, was an outside threat to make the playoffs based on points alone and consistency, which is something that Petty has rarely been able to say since about the mid-1980s when it comes to just being competitive enough to be in the championship conversation in any way other than looking back. And, like I said, the car was bad fast, as was shown nowhere better than in the Southern 500 that year within a car length. You can see the strength right there of Eric Jones. He's really good at corner exit. Here. Then he handle drives deep in the corner. Great corner by that 43 of Eric Jones. Great corner. He's got lap traffic in front of him. One lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. Can Hamlin do it? Just a half a lap remaining. The lap traffic's getting way out of the way here. Eric Jones pulls away on the back straightaway. Denny deep into turn three. What will he try to do? Denny Hamlin up to the back bumper. But the 43 of Eric Jones comes out of turn number four. Jones is going to win the Southern 500. So what happened to this team? A team that had so much hope from both themselves and the fans going into 2023 that many, including myself, thought that they would be Honestly, a surefire fit to make the playoffs in one way or another with the 43 car. Well, there was a lot of change. First off, the name change from RPM with Maury Gallagher to Legacy Motor Club. 
which was involving the ownership, or at least added ownership, from Jimmy Johnson, a seven-time NASCAR champion and somebody who, while not performing well in the last couple years of his career, has a certain pedigree of winning about him. Then, of course, you have later on in this season, and we'll talk about this season, the announcement that they would be switching over to Toyota in 2024. An announcement that many fans were honestly angered by and other fans were just confused by. But the performance is really what set them apart and showed why they were probably going to be having to make this kind of change. You had slow cars. There's no other way around it. The legacy cars this year have been a shell of what they were in 2022. Even the 42 is underperforming with rookie Noah Gregson. And we've seen it too with Eric Jones. The most we see of these guys on screen are incidents or problems or weird interviews that have nothing to do with racing. I'll tell you what, you see Jimmy Johnson working on that car. There is Johnson going around now. Did not hit the wall, but apparently uh, sustained some damage. And then Jones being pushed back to the garage and lap or two later, Noah Gregson. And Eric Jones was on a march. He was marching to the front. I don't, I'm not saying it was a rotor, but we need to look at the replay. And now the AMR safety team quickly on the scene. He dropped the window net right away. That's the signal to them that, that he's okay. Now the left rear tire was blown yeah. out. Yeah, he just spun around, spun down to the low side, hard into the wall with the driver's side of the race car. If you think, if you saw the left tire down, the way that car turned and spun out way early into the, the corner like that. See all the rubber off the left rear? I don't know that there's a... That was a hard ass hit, for sure. Um, not really. I went and hit the brakes into one, and then the car sat down and blew the left front brake rotor, I think, out of it. And then at that point, you're here like, shit, what do I do? Like, so tried to hook it through the infield. I've seen guys do it at Pocono. Obviously, once I went through the infield, I'm like, that's the wrong thing to do, but it's that or go head on into the fence. So tried to scrub a little bit of speed, but you know, overall, just been a tough year. Um, thanks to Maury Gallagher and, and Jimmy Johnson and Mike Beam, everybody who's a part of this Legacy Motor Club team, Sunseeker, just, it's just been tough on us and uh, thought we were going to have a decent day and Ran on the lead lap the whole day, just uh, nothing to show for it now. So I'm um, going to probably one of my favorite places next week, Sonoma. And then uh, I've been counting down the days till this offseason. When you look at how they're running right now, including the fresh penalty given to Eric Jones of 60 points, well, none of them are above 30th in the standings. Of course, you have Jimmy Johnson. He's been completely awful so far this year. Noah Gregson has had a tough rookie year with slow cars and trying to overdrive it. And then you got Eric Jones, who's had horrible luck and slow cars all at that, and a penalty now. 30th on back is what these teams have. And now, while having no speed to do so, if they want to make the playoffs, they are in a must-win situation. A situation that maybe a super speedway could help with, but even then, there's plenty of other great super speedway cars that are better than the legacy ones. So, honestly, it is a very dire situation. 2024 might be the way out, though. Heading to Toyota, many have thought that, oh no, this team is going to end up like Furniture Row, where it gets closed down after a while if it even performs, or like Michael Waltrip Racing, where it has issues. But... That's not a surefire thing. Yes, they probably will be third on the ladder when it comes to the Toyota side, but when you look at the amount of cars Toyota has and the ladder that they would have been on with Chevrolet, honestly, I think it is a better move and there is hope for the future, just not the future of 2023. But with that, I'm gonna pass this all on to you and ask what do you think of Legacy Motor Club? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to watch the NASCAR Weekly Podcast tonight on Eric Eastep's channel. So until then, have a good one.